we're going to give a short um, exploration of uh, one of the first books in our What Are Data theme. And that book is Braiding Sweetgrass, Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge, and the Teachings of Plants um, by Robin Wall Kimmerer. Um, this book is a great exploration of Indigenous ways of knowing um, and understanding uh, data, but it's more of a relationship or an exploration of how data is part of sort of human relationships and uses um, plants as kind of the guiding theme to understand that relationship. Paulina, what was the most important thing for you that you took away from this read? Oh, the most important thing that I took away from this read um, is that um, that connection to place um, and particularly kind of seeing our place, um, sort of our physical environment, um, as well as our relationships um, as sort of embedded in this way that we observe the world and that we're not really separate. We're always um, embedded observers in, in some capacity. And so um, whenever we think about data, we have to think about ourselves as also part of that data. Um, Megan, when you were reading it, uh, what was uh, one thing that you thought was really interesting that came out of the book? So I'm going to tack on to what you said, talking about this concept of, of always being embedded in our data. Um, for me, it was a very interesting idea because there's a, a split between US and UK archaeology in terms of how much is for field anthropology versus archaeology. And I've been in the UK for a while, so I've been very in the archaeology mindset. And this book took me back a lot to thinking about the anthropological teachings that sort of underpinned my introduction to archaeology and made me very conscious of the fact that we we need to be thinking about ourselves and our place in our research and also thinking about how um how the data we collect is people like how it's important to people um because it can get we can get quite uh separated from that so i, I thought that was very interesting the way this book made connections between people uh, and made me think a lot more about what we need to do as archaeologists. What would you say uh, is the most important thing you would say to someone else if you were trying to get them to read this book? I think that um, the most important thing or one of the important things that I would say to someone if I was trying to get them to read this book is that um, if you'd like to hear about uh, science um, as a story and not in the sense of a fictionalization, but science that's told in a compassionate human centered way, um, that still has all of the rigors that you might expect from a peer reviewed journal, um, because she does integrate that really well. But if you want a well-told story about um, a science that acknowledges scientists as part of that, I, I think that that would be one of probably my main points for getting people to understand and to get excited about this book. It is a science story told in a way that is compassionate and understanding and really interested in teaching people um, how many ways we can do science and how many ways we can approach data and see our lives um, and, and data as, as integrated into that and not as separate uh, sort of uh, uh, detached observations. Um, following on that, Megan, how do you feel that this book relates back to the theme that we've chosen to associate it associate it with. And to recap, that theme is what are data? I think this book is a really important part of asking that question and of answering that question. Um, because we, as scientists, we frequently exist in a very um, uh, black and white, uh, absolutes sort of, of world. And the data we collect, we think of as only being 
absolutely verifiable things. Um, and, and part of why I think this book is important is that it takes us, it takes us from the quantitative into the qualitative and shows us how the qualitative can still be quantitative and how these things are tied together. Um, and um, I think that that is important uh, because if we don't understand the way that our data relates to people, then it doesn't matter how much data we collect. Um, data has to be useful to people, otherwise it's just mindless observations. Um, Paulina, do you have any other recommendations for uh, things that people might want to check out if they read this and then they find that they enjoy the idea or they want to go deeper into the topic? Um, yeah, so I kind of went with, or I've been thinking about recommendations for this book um, in sort of a thematic sense. Um, so some of the recommendations that I have for exploring sort of this idea of story um, are, uh, there's a really great, um, fictional manga series called Descending Stories, and it focuses on a particular kind of, um, actually it's a comedic performance form in Japan. Um, but it's got this element of, of storytelling that I think is really cool. It's not necessarily data driven or anything like that, but it's got this capturing of story and intimate storytelling that I think is kind of thematically related to braiding sweetgrass. Um, if you want something that's a little bit more on the sort of rigor or nonfiction side, um, there is also a book called Potlatch as Pedagogy um, that embodies a little bit more of the ways that we that we can um, or that indigenous peoples incorporate um, their own uh, knowledge systems into teaching that you also see in um, Braiding Sweetgrass. Uh, for example, she um, has a story where she learns about how to make baskets. Um, and a lot of the parallels in that particular scene about how to make baskets are um, also acknowledged um, in Potlatch as pedagogy when they are describing uh, the process of actually making a totem pole. Um, I'd also recommend if you kind of want a playlist to go along with Braiding Sweetgrass, a couple of songs that I recommend are uh, Land Back, um, and, uh, a, a, um, which I believe is by um, The Hallucination, um, and uh, Goddess, which, which is by uh, Cruella. Um, just if you want some sort of uh, background music to relate back to some of the themes in Braiding Sweetgrass. Along those same lines, Megan, um, what are some works uh, that you would recommend uh, to supplement, uh, complement, or expand uh, the ideas that you saw in Braiding Sweetgrass? So I'm not going to give a specific work. I'm just going to give a, a, a suggestion, um, which I think is important. Uh, uh, if you read this and you find yourself uh, conflicted, or if you read this and you find yourself curious, um, there is a lot of scholarship out there about indigenous ways of knowing and indigenous ways of learning uh, and indigenous um, uh, methodologies as related to the sciences. Uh, and, and you could pretty much just dive in anywhere and you would know more than you were taught in most school systems. Um, so I would just suggest you do that poke your head around, see what's there, uh, and um, be as respectful as you can when you're doing that so that you don't end up going into other people's spaces and asking them to do the labor for you that you can do with a Google search. Yeah, um, I know that in the last year there have been more, more and more um, popularly available books like that that have come mm -hmm. out. Um, I know that uh, Robin Wall Kimmerer has a second book, um, I believe on gathering moss that is yes. in that vein. Um, there's also a recent book called Fresh Banana Leaves that's also on- I haven't read that yet. I haven't read it either, but <laughs> um, if folks are interested, there are there are more specifically books in this vein that they can, they can take a look at um, because I also know that Google searching can be overwhelming 
um, on it its can own. Be. So yeah. um, starting with a book like Braiding Sweetgrass and then just looking in her references or looking for more yeah. books by the author um, is a great place to start to uh, uh, do as Megan just recommended um, and, and explore um, Indigenous ways of knowing without putting that labor directly on Indigenous peoples and supporting their work. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thanks, Paulina. Thanks, Megan. Um, would you like to quickly recap uh, what book um, we just talked about? We just talked about Braiding Sweetgrass. Uh, this is a book uh, that looks at how data uh, are connected to people, that looks at how uh, indigenous ways of knowing can help us to understand where we sit within data and the data collection process. Um, it's a good book. You should read it. I mean, I know you have. Other people should.